now keen to enjoy some very chilled, delicious energy drink. <laughs> Now, this is the very good opportunity that you've been waiting for. Rush Energy Drink is the perfect choice. Now, listen, if you're not drinking Rush at this time, then you must be drinking trash. It is either Rush or trash. My brother, my sister, join us in celebrating our 10th anniversary in Ghana and try the smart new look with the same great taste that keeps you coming for more. I'm talking about Rush Energy Drink. And he has natural ingredients to help you increase your energy levels and improve your focus and concentration and enhance physical performance. Now, uh, Rush Energy Drink is a unique blend of taurine, vitamins B5, B6, B12, and B3, and the power of ginseng extract. Rush Energy Drink is a great choice for anyone who needs a little extra energy to get through the day. This is Rush Energy Drink, 10 years in Ghana. Very natural and very powerful. I say it again. If you are not drinking Rush, then you are drinking trash. Be smart. Grab a bottle of your favorite Rush Energy Drink and boost your daily activities. It's available in all supermarkets and provision shops in Ghana. Rush Energy Drink, it keeps you going. And remember, this advert is FDA approved. Remember, if you are not drinking Rush, then you are drinking trash. This is the African history class. And today I'm taking you very deep into history. We're taking you all the way to Palestine in the interim. Today is a very interesting day. I told you that already. Now today, my brother, my sister, is Monday. And every Monday is my birthday. I was born on Monday, the second day of September in 1974. Oh gosh. So I'm always excited when Monday comes. Today is the sixth day of November 2023. And today, several years ago, African people put themselves on a the map of history. Story. This is what is known as today in African history. Today in 1746, Absalom Jones rose from slavery to become the very first black Episcopal priest and the principal founder of the St. Thomas uh, Episcopal Church. Oh my God, the very first black Episcopal Church in the world. And today in 1947, six white police officers shot an unarmed 25-year-old black military veteran named Roland T. Price 25 times outside of a bar in Rochester in New York. Now the shooting was deemed justified even though evidence showed that Mr. Price did not resist the officer's demands. Today in 1962, the UN condemned South Africa's racial apartheid by ending economic and military relations with the country. And today in 1968, in one voting day, 97 blacks were elected to state legislatures and seven were elected as mayors and 400 to local governments in the former confederate states today in 1990 sharon priatt dixon now called kelly was elected mayor of washington dc making this a very first time a woman had become a mayor of washington oh my god and today in 2012 the first African-American president of the United States of America, Barack Hussein Obama. Oh my God, was uh, um, elected president again after he defeated Republican challenger Mitt Romney to win a second term in the White House. Obama was first elected on the 4th of November 2008 for a first term. He left office in January 2017 with his shoulders very, very high. This is today in African Easter. And I'm most excited to be with you now today. I'm taking you all the way to Palestine. And I'm going to be telling you a story that is going to last seven minutes. Sir. And it starts right now. <laughs> now today I'm telling you the story of Fatima Bernawi. Fatima Bernawi. Fatima Bernawi, my brother, my sister, was a great black Palestinian. And this is a photograph. Now, students, look at these photographs very, very well. Now, you'll see one photograph with Fatima wearing an army cap 
And the other one, dressed like an ordinary Muslim woman. My brother, my sister, her story is about to baffle you. Six more minutes to go. This is the story of Fatima Bernawi. <laughs> Fatima Bernawi was born in 1939. Oh yes, 1939. And she was born in Jerusalem, in Palestine. Did you hear me? She was born in Jerusalem, in Palestine. Now you all remember that before 1948, there was no Israel, right? So in 1939, there was no Israel. There was only Palestine, and Jerusalem was part of Palestine and the capital of Palestine. My brother, my sister, she was born to a Nigerian father and a Palestinian mother. She came out black, blacker than every Palestinian. My brother, my sister, born in Jerusalem in 1939. Now, at the age of nine, during the 1948 Nakba. Now, what we talk about Nakba, N-A-K-B-A, it means when uh, some people came from uh, um, uh, present-day Germany and some other parts of the world and took over Palestine and decided to call it Israel. My brother, my sister, it has nothing to do with religion. It has everything to do with history. In 1948, there was what was known as the Nakba. And the Nakba was when people came from present-day Germany and some other parts of Germany, running away from Hitler's massacre in what was known as the Holocaust. The Jews were massacred, and history condemns that. Now they ran away from Germany. And you see the Bible, my brother, my sister, we can go deeper into this history. They decided to trace their roots to Palestine and took over Palestine with the support of some Western countries, America included. My brother, my sister, they took over the land, and that was when the Nakba began. In 1948, when our heroine was only nine years old, her mother was Palestinian, and she was displaced from Jerusalem because that was her home, remember? When she was displaced, she ran into a refugee camp near Amman. How many of us remember where Amman is? Amman is a Jordanian city, the capital of Jordan. That was where she found herself. So she became a refugee in her own land, and she had to move to Amman in Jordan with her little child, Fatima Bernawi. My brother, my sister, they returned to Palestine, to her Nigerian father, who was also living in Palestine, and the reunion was very, very big. Now, her father was a soldier in the Palestinian army, even though Nigerian, and he fought in the 1936 Palestinian revolt. What was the Palestinian revolt of 1936? This was before Israel. My brother, my sister, there was a popular uprising by Palestinian Arabs in mandatory Palis Pal Palestinian um, state. My brother, my sister. And what happened? It was against the British administration of the Palestine mandate. So it was a war against the British in 1936. And Palestine took over and remained in Palestine until 1948, 12 years later, when Israel was founded on Palestinian soil. My brother, my sister, our heroine Fatima became so used to war. She saw her father fighting wars. And she saw her father talking about freedom. She saw all the things that happened when she was growing up. And she saw the atrocities meted out to Palestinians. And the first thing she did, she worked as a practical nurse for the Arab American oil company in Saudi Arabia. And over there, she learned a lot and became a very professional nurse. She was allowed to give shots to patients because... She had become very well trained, even though a lot of the soldiers did not want her to give them injections because she was black. She was very qualified, but she was refused. Her own duty refused 
My brother, my sister, nobody wanted her to treat them because of a black color. And she was Muslim, but they didn't care. In Saudi Arabia, they saw her as a black person first before even a Muslim. My brother, my sister, when she returned to Palestine, she still was looked down upon by the Palestinians because she was black. But she continued. Hey, my brother, my sister, she joined a women's movement. She was the very first to form that movement alongside some other people like Layla Khalid and Aisha Ode, including Rami Rasmie Ode. My brother, my sister, they formed a group that went into the newly born Israel to cause atrocities there and to chase the Israelis out. In fact, the Israelis by bombing the whole area. And you can see a photograph of Yasser Arafat with our heroine standing there. Yasser Arafat said when he was alive that if he ever was going to get married, there was only one woman in the world he would get married to. And this is our heroine for today, Fatima Bernawi. This is the photograph you see. Yasser Arafat, the leader of the PLO. My brother, my sister wanted to marry this great black woman. Her father was Nigerian and her mother was Palestinian. We are winding up. My brother, my sister, she was arrested after a botched bomb attack right there in Israel. My brother, my sister, she was arrested and jailed for 10 solid years. She was arrested in 1975. And she was jailed for 10 solid years until there was a prison, a, a prisoner exchange. You know what that means? I have taken some of your people as what prisoners. You have also taken some of my people as what prisoners. Return some of my people, and I also return some of your people. My brother, my sister, and you can see here, and I love what I'm seeing here. It says, I am Palestinian um, by blood. I'm Palestinian. My blood is Palestine, and Fata walks through my veins. My brother, my sister. That is what it is. And this is Fatima Bernawi. She says, I am Palestinian. My blood is Palestine. And Fata walks through my veins. Now, Fata, my brother, my sister, was a political party. Fata was formerly called the Palestinian National Liberation Movement. It's a Palestinian nationalist and social democratic political party. It is the largest faction of the confederated multi-party Palestine Liberation Organization, PLO. And Yasser Arafat was the leader of Fatah, a.k.a. PLO, the Palestine Liberation Organization. My brother, my sister, she was jailed for 10 years. And when she returned, she continued to fight in the army for the Palestinian people. She encouraged many more women to be part of it. Powerful as she was, my brother, my sister, she never looked back. She fought and fought. Even when retirement age came, she still continued to be in the army. And she directed many more women to fight for the liberation of the Palestinian people. The greatest Palestinian woman who ever lived. And she was African, Nigerian, and Palestinian blood combined. My brother, my sister, she continued to fight until she became so old. My brother, my sister, when she became so old, after taking so many awards and rewards from a country, Palestine, she fell ill. She died on the third day of November in 2022. She died in a Palestine hospital in Cairo at the age of 83. Today we remember this great black woman, Fatima Bernawi. Oh, this Palestinian Nigerian woman, even though she was discriminated as a black woman, both in Saudi Arabia and even in Palestine. Oh, and if you look at these photographs, this is Bernawi when she was in the army. And look at her when she was old, my brother, my sister. Today we remember this great black woman who was discriminated because of her skin color. Even though a Muslim, Muslims looked down on her. They saw her first as a black woman before even a Muslim. 
Fatima Mohammed Bernawi, the former highest female ranking member of the Palestinian Liberation Organization, PLO, was born in Jerusalem, the first female Palestinian to adopt an armed struggle against Israeli oppression, the first female Palestinian political prisoner who was sentenced to death for having resisted against Israeli occupation. My brother, my sister, she did not care to die. She wanted to die for her Palestinian people. She wanted to die for her people. She died, my brother, my sister. Yes, on the third day of November in 2022 in Cairo. Today we remember you, mommy. Mommy, a kai kai wo. Mommy, a kai kai wo. The very first woman, iconic Palestinian resistance leader when she died the whole of palestine came to a standstill many were those who cried subhanallah <laughs> Inna lillahi wa la ilaha illallah Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar wa lillahi alhamdu She died fighting for the liberation of the Palestinian people the greatest Palestinian who ever lived even Yasser Arafat, the leader of the PLO, one of the greatest Palestine ever produced, said that if he was ever asked to choose the greatest Palestinian, he would choose Fatima Muhammad Bernawi. Today we remember you. How nai mavinye kanumba nungpo. In the bedding of knowledge, I ask you, now that you know what to do, do, be an any or lay a mini or bafe, Zunda Kagane, Mezaka, Yene, Yen, Pabango, Boka, and Nunfifia, and Yanu Kaina, Wo, Bana, and Lele and Jima Singa Bekone, Lele and Jima Singa Beri, Yankara, the Conqueror, the Champion, the Lion is here. Zabu, 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 Z